Room 442 is presented by North Star Bets. That's a win. Half of each semi-final in the Champions League has been determined with AC Milan knocking out Napoli after a 1-1 draw and Real Madrid absolutely dominating against Chelsea, beating them at Stamford Bridge 2-0. I'm Sarah Peraria, joined by James Sharman and shock James. Real Madrid beat Chelsea. We'll get into that, but I think first we have to talk about Napoli and AC Milan. Yeah. What a game, lots of excitement there, and Napoli finally crashing out, finally kind of playing some poor football that Average we're used football, yeah, than like what we're used to. Yeah, I mean, like, great atmosphere there, mm-hmm. it was. Um, it, it's a bit of a shame because they've been the story, I think, for many people across Europe this season with their form domestically, and they're going to win the Serie A. That's theirs, but they have kind of come back down to earth in recent weeks. Um, the highest scoring team, in the Champions League, the highest scoring team in the Serie A, and, and it took them, what, almost two games, right, to score against AC Milan, like the 90th minute, whatever it was, when Osman finally got that goal, yeah. which I think is more about Milan's incredible defense. Yeah. And, and that should, I think, put some fear into all the remaining teams in the Champions League. Milan, not favored by anyone to, to go too far in this tournament, in the semi finals, maybe against. Their rivals enter. Yeah. Uh, we'll find out that later this evening, of course. But uh, yeah, I mean, interesting game. And I like this Milan team. They defend so well. They're so pacey, pushing forward. That Liao run. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Well, it's also- so deep. And, and to, I mean, Giroud just on a plate. Thank you very much. Yeah. But, uh, just, that just shows what they are, right? That they're, they're a great counter attacking team. You kind of forget that Giroud is still like Giroudding you know he's, he's <laughs> that's a great way to put it can we, can we frame that yeah. Giroudding what just, is Giroudding how do you, how do you classify Giroudding exactly just, I don't know I'd say playing you know playing scoring goals at the age he's scoring I think we you, keep, you don't like, see him at all apart from when he might miss your penalty yeah but then but you then, look at the end of the season he's got 20 goals no I can like I completely forget about him and how good he is when and then I see him you know like scoring in this game and I completely forget that this guy you know has won with France. He's he's won with you know AC Milan last. He's still doing so well. Chelsea. Chelsea. He's a serial winner, Sarah. Yeah, that's, that's what they the call thing, him, a serial eh? winner. He's he's great. I and think he's, he's, fantastic. But he's scoring. It's not like he's hopping around teams and they're winning and he's not playing. He it's is a big part of it, right? Yeah. And, and I think his teammates love playing with him. We mm-hmm. know Kylian Mbappe at France would rather play with him than Karim Benzema. Yeah, that's, think about that, that's right? Crazy. It's nonsensical, but that's the kind of player he is. He's so unselfish. Uh, so yeah, good for him. I mean, I'd love to see him, you know, lift the Champions League with AC Milan. I, mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to happen. But taking nothing away from AC Milan, yeah, really good performance. And Manion in the back there, what great goalkeeping! I think he's really shown to everyone that he is one of the top keepers in world football right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just from the from the goal out, they're just a, a well organized team. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, defensively, I wouldn't say they have superstars, but they got stars there. They're good players. Uh, but I think Pioli has just done a great job there, and I think he probably out outmanaged Spalletti yeah. over the course of two legs. Even though Spalletti's the one getting all the kudos this year, and rightfully so, mm-hmm. given what they've done domestically. But I, th- I thought it was a really interesting tie this one. And uh, like I said, I- I'm happy to see Milan advance, but I'm a little bit sad that, that yeah. Napoli couldn't take it a little bit further because they are they're just so much fun to watch. So fun to watch. I do wonder though if that penalty that Napoli had received had been converted. Also, why Victor Osiman wasn't taking that penalty mm-hmm. and Kvara was. Uh, I think that was a bad call on the players. I don't know. Usually a lot of the coaches say the players determine it on the pitch. Yeah. There's obviously a set of guys and then it's between them. But Osiman takes that penalty. You would think so. No, I, he's back from injury, though. Yeah, he? but... Is that part of the reason? I mean, it's a penalty. It's I don't think it will cause... If he's, playing, if he's playing a game, sure. it sh- a penalty shouldn't be causing him any issue. But I do wonder what would have happened if that was converted, right? Because we only Different saw... Game entirely, of course. Yeah, yeah, we only saw Napoli score, obviously, at the very end. And that was also high drama. Osiman running into the net, trying to get the ball from <laughs> Magnon. They're wasting time. Yeah. Um, just back to that Rafael Le- Leal run before we get into him, though. What a what a terrible terrible mistake from Ndombele who yeah, looked poor Ndombele, miserable. He, he did. I mean, he's a good player, right? Mm-hmm. He's had a great season, I think. Um, but to give it, the thing is, when you give a, the ball away in that position, you don't really expect it to result in a yeah. goal, do you? But then you don't, you know, you you got to counter that with the pace of of Leal and don't forget Diaz also pretty quick 
really yeah. good in the counter attack, right? So I, I love those. I love a good counter attacking goal. I don't think it <laughs> I much love a good it was, when it ends with a little tap in as well. Yeah, they're just brilliant, right? So I thoroughly enjoyed that. No, me too. Me too. Really quickly, shots for this game. Napoli with 23 shots with Milan six, but both <laughs> only had four on target. So Napoli's obviously shooting all over the place, but that's a very interesting stat here. But on to Rafael Liao, who seems to have Napoli's number. In the past three games that Napoli and AC Milan have played one another, he has two assists and two, two, assists, sorry, and two goals. He's got 11 goals in the Serie A. He went through, I think, a bit of a slump around the World Cup yeah. and just after, but he is really coming back into form, coming into the Rafael Liao we knew from last season that helped Milan win the Scudetto. But what a player he is and what a game he had last night. Yeah, what an exciting player for Portuguese fans. Yeah, you know, no kidding. Forward, if you can find the same kind of form in, in that shirt, for mm -hmm. sure. I mean, pace kills, right? And we're seeing across world football nowadays, players with that, that world-class pace can do so much damage. And, and there aren't many quicker than Rafael Leal. Mm -hmm. You do wonder where his future lies. With respect to the Serie A, which is having a, like we said last week, a bit of a renaissance, you know, and we hope it, it continues. But the big money isn't right now in the Italian Serie A, even though he's at one of the biggest clubs in the world. I, I wonder if uh, a, a big club from the Premier League at some point will come sniffing around because pace in the Premier League is everything, right? Mm -hmm. It's so important. So I can see him one day having his head turned. But right now, you know, listen, he's, he's won the Serie A. He's in the Champions League semifinals. Yeah, not it's a bad place. been a good place. couple of years, right? Not a bad place to be if you're Rafael Leal. All right, well, let's move on to the other game that happened yesterday in Real Madrid and Chelsea. Real Madrid beating Chelsea 2-0 at Stamford Bridge. Both goals coming from Rodrigo in the second half. And James, I mean, I think we both kind of thought this was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I know you had said at one point maybe Chelsea gets a goal and then Real Madrid turns the turns on the gas, but I think we all had this idea that it was all up to Real Madrid and what they wanted to do. The first half, they relaxed a little bit more. Chelsea mm -hmm. had a lot more possession, but then in the second half, they they just decided, all right, you know, we it's should time. probably score a goal now. Like it was, it just it was in incredible that they had control of both legs here completely. Yeah, speaking of counter-attacking goals, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, Rodrigo, pro Travis Shalabar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, felt bad for him. Um, you know, I, I will, listen, I, we're not surprised Real Madrid won this and, and they are, like you said, when they decide to turn it on in the Champions League, they turn it on in the Champions yeah. League and they could win this thing. So obviously the better team by, by some stretch. But I give Chelsea a little bit of credit for this one. I think Frank Lampard took a bit of a gamble mm -hmm. with his starting 11, um, playing Kante and Gallagher, you know, just behind Havertz. Yeah. Um, no one really called that, but it seemed to work, I thought, in the first half. They put some pressure on there. It, it was also a little bit pragmatic as well. Um, which caused some, you know, some some stodgy football. I think is the word I like, like to use. But he, he tried something. It seemed to work. Again, they weren't horrible. Yeah. And it's been just uh, there's one word to describe Chelsea's season. It'll be horrible, but they haven't been horrible game in and game out. They put in good performances, but they just can't score goals. But it's really that simple. You put a world class striker in that team this year. M maybe Tuchel's still there. Potter's definitely still there. And maybe Frank Lampard's got more than zero points so far <laughs> from his four games right it's it's a really weird set of uh, circumstances there but I, I i think we need to give frank lampard's you know a, a laughing stock in some quarters i think it's unfair um he may not be a great manager but he tried something it wasn't the worst idea in the world and they're beaten by a better team but they weren't embarrassed which at this point for chelsea hey you weren't embarrassed fantastic oh i don't know about that but okay let's see you what they're embarrassed <laughs> I mean, I, I thought that you have to convert some of those goals. Fair play mm. to Thibaut Courtois, who made some excellent saves, but some of those, Mudrik at the end there, oh, like Kukurea. No, these are these are goals that, as a professional football player, you have to but score. you should, 100% you just... should. just... Yeah, but that's, that's my, my point being that. If they just had that, that clinical edge in front yeah. of goal, it'd be a very different scenario. Well, I don't think you need a team. clinical finisher to finish these. Well, I, I think just, just a finisher. Yeah, an just, average finisher. Yeah, an average. Well, listen, Mudrik, you know, he only cost 100 mil. So, just 100 yeah, mil. And how many midfielders did uh, Frank play yesterday? 17. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 17. <laughs> <laughs> All right, speaking of Mr. Lampard, this is what he had to say after the match. We'll make a lot about this season for Chelsea because we've had so much success. And the, the, the reality is this club's going to be back and it will take work and it will take maybe a bit of process and I think the fans appreciated the performance today and maybe this season they've had moments where they're not feeling like that so we have to lash on to that um, get results for the end of the season get performance for the end of the season 
and then okay, go again next year. Seven games left, right? I mean, I'm talking about performances to the end of the season. Okay, mm-hmm. but how do you motivate this group for those performances? I mean, they're playing for jobs. Yeah. Right? Then maybe that's the one way to motivate them. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's been a miserable, miserable season for miserable. them. Miserable. And, and he's right. They will be back. I mean, I can see this team next season being in the European spots once again, 100%, because they have great talent in that, that squad. They're going to bring in a high-priced manager, which, okay, hasn't always worked, but generally it does if you get the right guy. If you clear out four or five players from that bloated squad, I think that will really help as well. So it won't be Frank Lampard at the helm. No. But if, if it's a Julian Nagelsmann or Luis Enrique, they're walking into a pretty good situation, I think, and really only one way to go as well. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It looks like, I don't know, Nagelsmann, there's more talks about him going, but I think we won't find out until the summer transfer yeah. window and all that goes down. But just to remind you, Chelsea's uh, upcoming schedule, they don't play until next week because they were supposed to play United this weekend. United are playing in the FA Cup semifinal, but they have Brentford, Arsenal. They still have to play City, Newcastle twice, Brighton. Sometime, I guess, United, that game will be scheduled. That's a horrible schedule. It's it's not good. It is Even not Brentford, good. Right? That's a West London derby. Yep. We know a Brentford is this year. They're a strong team, tough to beat. Mm-hmm. That's a dri- they, they, could, <laughs> they could lose all their remaining games, couldn't they? <laughs> they could get worse. We will see. But that is right. Real Madrid are on to the semifinals, and they will face either Man City or Bayern Munich. And AC Milan will be facing Inter Milan or Benfica. Those semifinals will be kicking off May 9th, and we'll be talking all Champions League up until then. Room 442 is brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win.